It's time for another one-off FM23 rebuild, potentially one of the last ones of the game. Of course, FM24 is coming out soon, but don't worry, we'll keep the content coming. But today we're heading over to Spain to go and rebuild Sevilla, who currently find themselves, at least at the time of recording, right at the bottom 20th place of a Spanish league table. That's right, we'll be taking over as Sevilla manager in FM23 and giving ourselves five years to try and turn the club's fortunes around. Can we take them to the top of the Spanish league? Maybe even and go to the Champions League final. You know how Sevilla are in recent years. They've been winning Europa League after Europa League. It's basically their competition, but the Champions League has eluded them. So we're going to try and deliver it to the city of Seville. We have won the Spanish First Division title just after the Second World War. So it's been a long time since any huge honours like that. Europa League aside, of course. But with the right transfers, hopefully we can take this club in the right direction. We've got a transfer update on with as regular transfers as we could have. I did notice, though, Sergio Ramos is not in the team so we've got to deal with that we don't have Sergio Ramos but some of our best players include Marcus Acuna the left back Yusuf El Nasiri who is a brilliant striker a physical threat six foot two who scores goals for fun and according to the game our other best ability player is Eric Lamella former Spurs player fairly injury prone if I remember correctly didn't always play too often but he is here at the club and hopefully we'll get some good results out of him and in terms of potential we don't have too many young stars with lots of ability for the future but we do have have a brilliant centre-back by the name of Tangai Nianzu, who was signed from Bayern Munich a couple of years ago. £13.5 million pounds or so was the signing, and now he's valued at about £40 million. So clearly a centre-back with a lot of promise, and we'll be looking to build around him at the back. We've got a decent staff situation at the club as well, but we'll be looking to improve that too. Financially, we've got £37 million in the balance, and not too much in the debts and loan. Transfer-wise, we've got £4 million pounds to spend, so I'll try and do a little bit of business before the start of our first season and the facilities are looking in pretty good shape but before we kick this rebuild off I'm gonna do the usual I'm gonna ask you guys to show as much support as you can to the video if you can hit that like button YouTube sees that thinks it's a good video promotes it in the algorithm and that helps the channel grow which is very important right now for me as we are pushing for 25k subs before the end of FM23 so that's the aim and any support to get there would be amazing it might seem quite far away but this percentage of people are watching the videos and aren't subscribed so if you're in that percentage that enjoy the content but haven't hit that button please go ahead and do so and the last thing is all of these rebuilds come from your suggestions so let me know in the comments who you'd like to see rebuilt next and with that being said let's kick things off you might notice as well by the way we do have an upgraded camera setup it's definitely an upgraded camera it's the one up from what I had before I'm using the Elgato Facecam Pro and we've got a new lighting setup too still trying to tweak it this is only my second video recording with it so let me know if you see any major issues if something looks off if the colors look off let me know because it's probably the settings that I have put on the camera but yes enough about that let's get stuck into the rebuild where I'm going to try and figure out a tactic for this team try and make some transfers with the four million that we've got and try and improve the squad a little bit ahead of our first season we only made one major sale in this window that was done by ourselves and that was me selling Suso to Atalanta in Serie A. And he was of course in that league for a while with AC Milan but for us, I mean it looks like he didn't play too much last year, potentially an injury issue I'm not sure but he wasn't really blowing me away he was already transfer listed when the game started and I just kind of thought we've got so many options on those wide areas Suso was the one that had the easiest sellability so I've decided to move him on and we got a decent fee for just under 8 million which we can use to reinvest in the squad and I didn't really have too much to spend it on I mean they've had a big transfer window by the looks of it Sevilla we've got a team that's stacked in a lot of areas the one place I thought we were lacking was right back where we had Jesus Navas the former Man City player but he was quite old there was no one really under him so we spent a couple of million 2.5 million in fact to go to Getafe and sign their right back his name is Juan Iglesias and he comes in as kind of our backup but we'll get on to more exciting transfers later down the line I'm sure season one though this is the team that we're going to be using in a interesting tactic to say the least I'm going for an asymmetrical one where the tactic isn't necessarily completely balanced it looks a bit misshapen but I'm hoping it will work it's a 4-1-1-4 it was basically a 4-2-4 and I just shoved Samare back here or a deep line playmaker should I say so it'd be an interesting tactic we're going to try and exploit a two striker formation and hopefully score a lot of goals and the reason I went for that is we have two very good strikers already in my opinion El Nasiri we looked at earlier but Rafa Mir also 
Looks like he could be a very good talent in the FM world, and we'll be hoping we can get some results out of him. This is our best 11 to introduce you to them. We've got a Campos on the wing with Lamella, Ivan Rakitic in the midfield with Fernando, both of them of an age now. Fernando 35, Rakitic 34. Clearly, we might need some new fresh legs in that midfield next summer. Acuna, Marcel at the back alongside Nyanzu and Jesus Navas with Dimitrovic in goal, the 30-year-old Serbian. So there's work to be done with this squad for sure, but this is what we're dealing with for season one. We'll see how we get on and then we'll adjust from there, make transfers and really get stuck in to the rebuild. So let's see how this team can do in our first season. And actually, it is not a terrible result by any stretch of the imagination. I will certainly take this. We've got a quarterfinal in the Spanish Cup. Not amazing, not awful. That is what it is. The Super Cup, we did lose out to Man City. Sevilla, like I mentioned, are the kings of the Europa League, but we're not focusing on that in this rebuild. We want to win the Champions League if we can. And currently, in our first year, we're already getting to the quarterfinals, knocked out by Manchester United. In the group stage, we found ourselves in a group alongside Leipzig, Marseille and Celtic. We came out on top with only one loss which put us into the round of 16 where we knocked out Galatasaray a fairly favorable draw let's be honest and then United absolutely smashed us actually 8-2 we know in European clashes between Sevilla and United it's usually Sevilla that get the win but in this case that was not how it went 8-2 on aggregate very disappointing in that sense but at least we got to the quarters it's a decent start for us and then in the league I think this is quite good 82 points is not a bad result at all eight losses four draws finishing ahead of Atletico Madrid Real Madrid and Barca are the two teams above us on 86 and 90 points respectively so we're eight points off the top of the table we'll hopefully be able to close out that gap but of course this isn't a static league at the same time Barca and Real Madrid will be making transfers themselves and getting better but we're going to try and close that gap with the right kind of signings that will be hard with only 10 million pounds and 130k in the wage budget but we'll try and make it work before we get our teeth stuck into the transfers for season two though let's have a look at the top performers where N Nasiri here I called him El Nasiri earlier but it's N Nasiri apparently he absolutely smashed it by the looks of it 40 goals in the league is an incredible return I don't understand how he is so good with the attributes he's got but we're not going to complain clearly the tactic helped him out quite a lot Rafa Mir with 28 goals his strike partner scoring plenty Mariano as well getting 16 Fernando did well as did Gibral So in midfield who I'm hoping will be a big player for us he looks like a very handy talent in there Ocampos on the Mela getting 26 goals between the two of them and overall that's a very good team performance so now let's get stuck in get them transfers done and see how our team looks after season two and I can imagine it's going to look very different to what we have now we're going to kick off with the sales. I'll try and run through them fairly quickly for you. But the first one, Ivan Rakitic had a year left on his deal, was on pretty high wages, over 100 grand a week, and actually only started two games last year. So we've let him go for FC Basel, a very small fee, but it does at least get his wages off the books. Similar situation for Oliver Torres, or just Oliver as he's known in game now, used to be one of the best wonder kids in the world in Football Manager. Now he's 28, again, started zero games, came off a bench 21 times. He's gone to play for Feyenoord, out in the Netherlands for 4.6 million. I didn't feel like we needed this midfielder, Juan Jordan. We had so many players in the area and of course we're only really playing two central midfielders so we don't necessarily need all that depth. So we've sold him to Club America. 5.25 million is the fee. Again, look, played three times for his last year. Only two starts. So let's get him gone and reinvest that money. Nemanja Gugel, another player that just didn't really feature too much for us, has moved to Leicester to go play in the Premier League for 3 million. So clearly they got promoted on the first time of asking. Started 11 times times came off a bench 18 just wasn't really someone I wanted to build around long term and a lot of this was to try and clear the wages off the book so we could really start fresh with our own squad and also get rid of some of these older players too and speaking of getting rid of older players we sold Rakitic I mentioned Fernando was quite old again another one on high wages he's left the club at the age of 36 he moves on for 1.9 million pounds to go and play for this team which is BRA Red Bull Bragantino not too sure about them, but he's gone over there, was very good for us last year, actually played quite a lot of games. So he is someone that we're going to have to replace, but clearly he was declining. And now with that money bought in and the 10 million that we started with, we were able to get stuck into our own transfers. Now we have a limit in our squad for the amount of foreign players we can register, aka non-European players. So I've had to stick to that. We're only allowed three of them. We'll talk more about those foreign players in a second, but a non-foreign player here, a Portuguese 24-year-old has joined 
joined us. Daniel Braganca joins us from Sporting Club de Portugal. After a few good appearances for them last year, 2.3 mil seem like good value. Gives us some depth in that area. I don't expect him to be a regular starter, but as a squad player, I don't think it's the most amount of money for someone who, according to his attributes on paper, should be pretty decent for us. A slightly more expensive player, but maybe one of the best signings we've made this summer is Rodrigo Villagra. He joins us from Teleres out in Argentina after two good seasons there. Now, this is a foreign player who takes up a foreign squad spot, so we had to be aware of that. 6.25 mil was the fee. It was a release clause, and clearly he was worth it because he's now valued at over £20 million. Good ability. He's going to work very well for us, I hope, in that box-to-box -box role potentially, or maybe as a deep-line playmaker, though I'm not too sure how suited he would be to that. Actually, you know what? Very suited, to be honest. He might be a star for us. Very happy to bring him in to the team. He wasn't the only foreign player, though, because our goalkeeping options, in my opinion, were quite weak. Dimitrovic was okay. Uh, we had a guy called Nyland, who we've loaned out. I wasn't really a fan of them. But our scouts were raving about Luis Jr. If you don't know, we can only sign players that our scouts recommend in these videos to try and keep it fair. So I'm not using my own knowledge. And Luis Jr. was recommended to us on the scout reports. I thought, you know what? Seems like a good deal. 11.5 million. We went for it. We've bought him in. Yes, a lot of money, but hopefully... I mean, he could be our goalkeeper for the whole rebuild and maybe even Brazil's national team goalkeeper in the future in a post Allison world, post Edison world as well, of course, maybe not quite Brazil's goalkeeper then, but still a very talented player. And hopefully he'll come good for us because it is a pretty big fee for us at this stage. And finally, our last signing of the summer is Alberto Moliero, the left-sided player who can also play as a 10, although we don't have one of those in our system. He is a 19-year-old Spaniard joining us from Las Palmas, who are usually a second division side, but because we have the update here to have the teams and the correct standings as to where they are in real life. Las Palmas did get promoted. He was playing in the first division last year. When he did play, he did well, but he didn't get too many opportunities. So hopefully here at our club, we can provide him with those as the assistant to play him and hopefully develop him because he clearly has a lot of potential. 8.5 million, not the biggest fee in the world, I don't think. A player that can help us, but also grow too. We're trying to lower the age of the squad. And I definitely think we've done that with some of the signings this summer. And it now leaves our best 11 looking like this. Dimitrovic in goal with Montiel who was on loan at Forest. I don't know why we loaned him out because we needed that depth at right back. Now he's came back to us and I'm sure he'll play a hell of a lot for us. At the age of 26, he's got a lot of years left in the tank. Nianzu with Marcel and Acuna, Villagra and Delaney who comes back off of a loan to Anderlecht where he did very well for them. We also have Eric Lamella, Acampos, Mir and N. Nasiri up front. That is our team. Just to quickly show you, the only time we'll really cover it in this video, here is our squad depth screen featuring only the players in the first 11. So you can just get a quick look and have a look around at who we have in each area. Luis Junior, Dimitrovic, here's right back, centre back. Left back where we actually have quite a lot of depth. The central midfield areas where we only have a few options now, but I think that's a lot more balanced and will give players enough game time. Some decent options on the wing too, potentially too many. And up front, two good strikers with two good backup players. Luki Bakio, maybe not necessarily a striker, but can play there. Also, I have no idea if that's how his name is pronounced, so apologies if that was awful but yes our team is ready for season two let's get stuck into it and see if this side can do any better than third place and you know what it is a season that i think we can be annoyed at some things and laugh at other things i mean We'll start with the Cups, the Spanish Super Cup semi-final exit to Atletico Madrid, Spanish Cup semi-final exit to Bilbao. Um, the main one, we've got to talk about it. Sevilla are just, I, I think, glued to the Europa League. We've actually gone and won the Europa League, despite me saying, I'm pretty sure, at the last season that I was focusing on the Champions League and I didn't want to win the Europa League, but we've got it. It's certainly nothing to sniff our noses up at, and considering, I mean, our group performance was awful. Five points in a group with Bayern and Marseille. Yes, Bayern are great, but Marseille... I mean, should they finish that many points above us? I'm not so sure. Pretty disappointing there, but that did knock us out into the Europa League where we've gone on to beat Chelsea in the final. Let's have a look how we got there. Knockout playoff rounds. We played Sporting Club de Portugal. Only just made it past them, but actually did quite well against Inter. 4-2 on aggregate. Faced off against FC Copenhagen, who drove us to a 6-5 aggregate game. Are we shipping loads of goals in this tactic? We might be letting too many in here. We beat Inter Milan, then we faced AC Milan, where we beat them 3-2 to make the final, where we beat Chelsea in penalties. If we have a look at that game, it was Alberto Moliero, the new signing that we had, scoring the goal. Romelu Lukaku for Chelsea went to penalties, where Oscar scored the winner for us. Fair play to him. Looks like he's developed fairly well for us this season. And overall... 
Yeah, not a bad year. I mean, Copenhagen losing 4-1 away, having to win 5-1 at home. A 95th minute winner from Mariano to drag us in to the semi-final. And I didn't cover the league yet, but we did finish fourth on less points than we got last year. Although the amount that you needed to win the title was also less. Not our best year, but Atletico also a very good team and have overtaken us there. Going forward, though, we don't want to see these kind of drop-offs in form because before we know it, I mean, poor Champions League performance, poor league performance. It could have been an awful season if not for what seems to be a pretty lucky cup run to win that Europa League but we have one trophy in the bag we'll certainly take it hopefully it's a sign of things to come hopefully it's not the only trophy we win as we're only in season two at this point and that'll be a pretty disappointing rebuild if nothing else happened and the Siri had a good year again 32 goals in 42 appearances not as good as the year before but doing well for us and he is wanted by Chelsea and Liverpool could be quite hard to keep hold of him Rafa Mir now capped for Spain three caps one goal 14 goals in 27 appearances in the league for us Ocampos doing well well, as did Mariano and Villagra having a great debut year in that midfield with a seven average match rating. Luis Jr. also did well, but overall a much more tame year for us. Not as exciting, although saying that we have won the Europa League. I keep saying that like it's not a big deal. It certainly is, but we want to win more. So with that said, we're going into our third season now out of five, and we're going to try and make some transfers that take this team to another level. And to do so, we've got 25 million and 100 grand in the wage budget. Before we get on to the transfers, don't forget if you are enjoying the video or you just want to be nice, make sure you've hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you again. So let's get into the transfers. And it's been a very fun summer with some huge sales and we've had way more than 25 million to spend because of it. You'll be very excited to see what did happen, I'm sure. We'll get to it in a second though. We'll start off with the cheaper sales. Kiki Salas, a defender here, has gone to get a taffe for 2 million. Dodi Luki Bakio here decided that I pronounce his name so badly that he wanted to leave the club or maybe it was because he wasn't playing enough he really wasn't so he has moved on to go back to Germany to play for her for Berlin for 6.75 million we had so much death at left back and whilst he might not be the worst of the left backs he was the most sellable asset so we've let him go it was Ludwig Augustusinson Augustinson Either way, I've tried, guys. He's gone to Fiorentina for 8.75 mil. Pretty good deal in my eyes for a man who did play quite a lot for us last year. But there is enough depth in that position that we can let him go. And I think the kind of money we bought in for a 30-year-old is certainly a good bit of business. Federico Gattoni, one of our centre-back options, an injury-prone centre-back, has left us to go join Velez in Argentina. As you can see, did not play much at all. So we've let him go for a little bit of cash. Loic Bardé at centre-back, 24-year-old Frenchman who joined the club from Rennes. I mean, first season didn't play too much for us. We loaned him out to Nantes, out in France for a season. Did pretty well there, but just wasn't in our plans anymore. So 4.2 million is the sale to sell to Vigo and we can reinvest that in our squad. Some of these sales might seem strange, but once you see the incomings that we have, it will make more sense. But Montiel was a player that needed to leave. Last season, he actually played a hell of a lot, starting pretty much every single match at right back. Navas has left the club and retired. Montiel was the main starter but he was complaining about some things at the club so we've decided to move him on shift his wages and we'll look for someone new in that area all of those sales added up but it was nothing compared to the sale of Yusuf N. Nessery here I really didn't want to sell this guy but he decided he wanted to leave he had a year left on his deal and wasn't willing to renegotiate because of the interest in him so we had to decide do we lose him on a free or do we take the cash and run and that's what we did we offered him out got a 60 million pound bid from Chelsea he rejected it and I thought ah we're stuck with him now not that being stuck with him is bad with the amount goals he scored but we did want to cash in on him thankfully though Liverpool came in a much lesser fee at 40 mil but it's good business for us and we don't usually get huge sales like that in these rebuilds so that is something that we can definitely work with to reinvest in our squad and we have signed quite a few quality players in my opinion first Fernino 23 year old striker joins us from Burgos a team in the lower down divisions where he's been doing quite well for two years he's only going to be a backup striker option but he is a good player to have around the club Umar Soleil joins us in defense he's going to partner Nianzu at the back long term I would have thought a brilliant player valued at nearly 50 million 24 years of age and we picked him up for a measly fee of 14 mil from RB Salzburg great talent great passing ability and the perfect modern day ball playing centre back the spending continued with Andy Juf joining us in midfield he came in from Len after a very good season for them six goals five assists and a very high average match rating actually for his time at the club 16 million was his release clause he's valued at way more than that now so I think again good business very well-rounded central midfielder and he'll fit our system them very nicely. Our replacement for Enesiri though up front is going to be Abel Ruiz, a 
34-year-old Spaniard trying to keep a nice Spanish core to the squad. He joins us from Braga, where he's been scoring goals for them, maybe not on an elite level just yet, but I do feel like he has the ability and the attributes to kind of fulfill what we had from Enesiri and arguably could be a better player. He's got a lot going for him, six foot as well, a Spanish international, and hopefully this will go down as a good sign. And if not, we might start to struggle after losing our very talented Moroccan. Speaking of talent, though, we have added an abundance of it to the squad by bringing in Nicolo Zaniolo, the 25-year-old Italian who was out on loan at Aston Villa, then went back to Galatasaray, did well there. But we were able to get him for a cheap fee of 13 million. Galatasaray couldn't resist the money. They've let him go. He has got ability of the highest level, six foot two, can play on that right-hand side, strong. Nice passing, nice dribbling, nice finishing. He is going to be one of our star men, I'm sure, an Italian international, and he comes in to really improve our first 11, which if we take a look at it now, pick without restriction, pick best 11, this is what we've got. Luis Junior is in goal with Carmona at right back, Umar Soleil at centre-back with Marcao, but really, that is going to be Nianzu, Acuna, Villagra, Delaney, Zaniolo, Oscar, Rafamir, and Abel Ruiz. This team is really starting to become our team at this point. A lot of these signs were made by us and hopefully things will work out well. Carmona, by the way, is a player that's came out of the academy, been on loan and is just filling in there. I don't know why. Clearly, we haven't got very many options in that position, but we'll work on that over time. I feel like Juan Iglesias could do the job, but we'll see. We have been upgrading the facilities and also expanding the stadium capacity since you last saw us. So things are going well. We've brought in a good squad, but let's see how they can get on in our third season at the club. And this doesn't look good at all. I'm really hoping that when we click in the Champions League, it's going to say we got to the semi-final or something. Uh, but yeah, it's been a flop of a season. Spanish Cup, runners-up. UEFA Super Cup, runners-up. Champions League, how far did we get? Did we make it out of the league phase? Oh, we didn't even do that. Seven points, five losses, two wins. Awful. And the league is the reason I'm disappointed. I've just seen it. 61 points, 38 games played, one point off of the Europa Conference League spot. Kind of glad we didn't get that. If we're going to finish this low, I'd rather not be in anything. Then we can really go for it next season without the worry of Champions League football. Um, but Bilbao, uh, Betis, Sociedad finishing above us. Really not good enough. 88 points was enough to win the league yet again for Real Madrid. Seven draws, four losses. Really disappointing though. 11 losses this season against some teams we should never lose to. 10 draws as well. We were winning games, but clearly not enough. Let's see why that was. I don't know what happened, what caused that to be the case. I thought our signings were pretty good this year. Yes, we lost El Nasiri, but we seem to have filled those goals with Abel Ruiz. So, I mean, Rafa Mir doing well. Abel Ruiz doing well. Andy Juve having a great season. Ocampos and Nianzu also doing well. Zaniolo comes in, bags us nine goals, so seven in the league, 10 assists. That's a pretty good performance from him. Really not sure what went down here that caused us not to do so well. Maybe it was our lack of depth at right back. Maybe that really killed us in the end. I don't believe a single position could have dragged us down so far. Just a lot of inconsistent form going on patches where we were losing a lot of games. Maybe a dynamics issue. I mean, the club's not in a terrible place in terms of a dynamics. But yeah, uh, maybe maybe this isn't going to go too well. We've only got two seasons left to go. We have maxed out the training facilities, youth facilities, junior coaching and recruitment. Capacity is in the middle of being upgraded as well, the stadium capacity. So things look like they're moving up at the club. It was just a very poor years so I think this year season four's transfers have got to be big big transfers or at least ones that really suit the team because we can't have another season like that we could potentially lose our job if we did and that hasn't happened in a rebuild yet if I remember correct but I imagine the club vision won't be very good it's a C I mean I don't know how it's a C it should be lower than that we're going to take it. Hopefully our past glories are helping us a little bit. We've got two more seasons and next season we really need to prove ourselves to show that we're actually going to go somewhere in this rebuild. And we're going for a pretty fresh look squad, getting rid of quite a lot of players, bringing in a fair few new ones as well to try and refresh the team. Marcus Acuna has left, 33 years of age, was taking up the wage bill and still playing plenty for us and doing well, but his contract was running out and he went to River Plate on a free. Mariano also comes to the end of his contract, wasn't really playing too much last year and again had one year left on his deal. We didn't extend and he goes to Mönchengladbach in Germany on a free transfer too. Adnan Yanazai has left the club, former Manchester United player, you might remember him, but yes, sir. Uh, spent a few years with us playing a lot of bench appearances last time featured once off the bench that was it so 4.3 million out the door and in comes the cash Ika Villar a young player with a lot of potential has also left to join Man United didn't really know too much about him looked okay with potential wasn't really going to help our first team though and then the offers came in he decided he had to leave to join Man U it was his dream or whatever it was 
Basically, it would be unsettled if I rejected it, so we just let him go and took the cash for him. And one that might surprise you, we've actually let our goalkeeper go, Luis Jr. There was an option on the market that I felt made more sense, and yeah, Luis Jr. taking up a foreign squad spot wasn't too great last year, so we've let him go. Uh, yes, it is a big loss, 2.4 million, so we've lost about 10 million on the player. Got three years out of him, mind you, but just... Yeah, he's, he's gone and you'll see why. And that is because we have bought in the Georgian shot stopper, Giorgio Mamardashvili, who is the same age as Luis Jr., but for me is a much better player at this stage. 28 appearances for his national team already, a consistent performer, six foot six, and great ability all around. He joins us after three good seasons for Valencia. Not amazing, but five million pounds was the fee. Once I saw that on the scout report, that that's how much he was available for. Um, you know, I was trying to shift Luis Jr. as quick as I could because even though, yes, we made a loss on him, his sales, still covered half the price of Mamar Dashvili and to pay 2.5 million for that kind of upgrade made a lot of sense to me. So yes, Georgie Mamar Dashvili is our new goalkeeper, stealing him from Valencia. Another bargain player, Sergio Gomez, can play on the wing, but he is joining us as our Marcus Acuna replacement at left back. 3.8 mil was all it took to get him off of Manchester City, where he wasn't really playing too much at all. Um, and yeah, I think it's a bargain. I think he's going to be great for us. He's got all the ability. Star ratings might not show it, but I think this man has everything he needs to be a dominant presence in that left back spot. We decided that right back was an issue last year and we have filled that spot. 22 year old Arnau Martinez joins us from Girona where he's been very good, particularly last season, really coming into his own. He's a great player, physically quick, decent tackler, can go forward and do well too. Very much complete wing back as it suggests that he is here, a consistent performer who enjoys the big games and also has an international appearance for Spain. He could be the long term deal for us at right back. Very happy with him. So we had a new goalkeeper, we had two new full backs, but we also needed a backup goalkeeper, found this guy. Kim Christian Hoyen Hall. He's a new gem player, the only one that we've signed so far. Five million pounds for him from Bodo Glimt to secure our long term future in that goalkeeper position. And then with Luis Jr. gone, we were able to have a new foreign player join us. So we've gone for Tales Magno, 23 year old Brazilian, joins us from New York City FC in the MLS, where he has been, I mean, walking it to be honest. It's been a cakewalk for him. Too easy. And now he's moved in to the big leagues, joining the Spanish division to play for us at Sevilla. Can play on both wings and up front and has the ability to do very, very well. And those were our transfers completed. So our team, our best 11, should I say, going into this new season will be Mamar Dashvili in goal, an improvement in my opinion. Nianzu, Soleil, Carmona and Gomez. I think that is more likely going to be Arnau Martinez on most occasions. Andy Diouf, Villagra, Zaniolo, Magno, Rafamir and Abel Ruiz. And I think this team together could definitely cause some problems. I don't know how to describe it, but it feels very severe to me, this team. Like, it doesn't feel like we've got too many stars, but just a unit of a side that's going to work well together, hopefully. But with a side we've got, it's almost impossible, in my opinion, that we can have a season as bad as the last one. Hopefully, just a blip, but let's see how they can get on in our penultimate season for season four. And this is much more like it. Yes, we didn't have any European football, but we finished in third place, losing only eight games, drawing five and getting 80 points, which of course, in most seasons, wouldn't have been enough to win the league, and it's not, but we are miles above everyone else. Atletico Madrid having a very bad year. Barca only eight points ahead. Real having a stunning year with 94 points. Spanish Super Cup, Real beaters, and the Spanish Cup, Atletico beaters, the two Madrid sides, causing us some problems there, but it's a much better year in the league. And with one year left to go, we're gonna be in the Champions League for it, and Hopefully that will lead to some success. Maybe we can win the UCL in our final season. We're going to have a bit of money to spend. With 25 million in the budget to spend, but let's have a look at how our new players perform. Zaniolo Ruiz and Rafa Mir doing very well for us, our three best players. Sergio Gomez having a good year as well. Let's take a look at him. Yes, developing very nicely. I knew he'd fill the left back spot well, and he really did. 20 assists in 36 games for 3.8 million. What an absolute bargain that is. Very happy with that. Andy Diouf doing well still. Umar Soleil doing well. Gibral So, Villagra. This team is performing very well. Arnaud Martinez did start most of the games at right back and had a good year for us. So it looks like we have ironed out some of the issues in the team. But, you know, we want to take this one step further. Tales Magno, by the way, four goals, fairly disappointing. Maybe we still need some extra players in those wide areas. We'll see what we can do. We've got a bit of money to spend. We're going into our final season now. I feel like we're just one step away from really putting on a title challenge. I wouldn't quite say we're there yet, but with a few transfers, hopefully we can do it. Push for a cup, maybe even go for the Champions League at the same time. It can't just be a Sevilla rebuild where we win the Europa League. That is basically what Sevilla are anyway, and I don't want to do that. So let's see if we can go one step further in season five.
And it's been a very interesting summer. Just want to shout out Zaniolo. He's still at the club, but he didn't actually have to be. His release clause was activated by Liverpool at £59 million. I thought we'd lost him, but I thought, you know what? Let's just offer him a final contract, see if he decides to stay. And he did. He decided he likes it here. He's going to stick around. He's got a £101 million release clause. Also, the real reason he stayed is we upped his wages by pretty much double. But yes, Zaniolo is sticking around and he isn't going to go for his release clause fee, which looked very likely once Liverpool activated it. So happy to have him still here. Here. Out goes Thomas Delaney out the door to Montpellier on a free because his deal was up at the club. Fernino never really settled in the team, never really got too much game time, so he's gone to play for Shakhtar in Ukraine for 3.6 million. Alberto Moliero is just not really developing too much in this world, and we've decided we're going to have to loan him out. I mean, he did get a fair amount of game time in his first couple of seasons, but never really kicked on, and we thought, you know what, the best thing for him is going to be football, so he's gone to Mallorca on loan for the year. Lucas Acampos has also left another one where his contract was running out, so he's gone to Monaco for 1 million, a very good servant for us, but it's time for him to move on. And Daniel Braganka, who he signed earlier on in this rebuild for 2.3 million, played a bit, then never really played again, so he's gone to Valencia for 3.4 mil. And we have mastered the free transfer market this summer. Most of these that you're about to see came in for completely free at the end of their contracts. Firstly, some extra centre back depth behind the Anzu Sole and Marcel. We now add a fourth centre back in Mere Demiral. And I think our defenders in that position now are at another level, like very, very good. So we're really happy to have him join the club. He's joined us on a free from the Saudi Arabian divisions where he's been walking it, to be honest. He's been so good over there. Nianzu, as you can see, Soleil, Marsau, and now at the back with them, Demiral. A brilliant four options at the back, and that bodes well for the season in terms of our depth. Speaking of depth, we've brought in a free player in Pasquale Mazzocchi here. Never heard of him before, but he's valued at 40 million. We got him on a free. He can play at left back and right back at the age of 30. Joins us from Salah Natana, where he was in the second division for them. Three good seasons in Syria, gets relegated and just absolutely blows everyone away. Available on a free and we've picked him up. Latina Traore takes Fernino's spot as that like third, fourth choice striker in the team. The Burkino Fasa International is a brilliant physical presence, a bit more developed in my opinion than Fernino and he was scoring goals for fun at Shakhtar so hopefully he'll do the same for us here at Sevilla. Andreas Skov Olsen provides us some extra depth on that right hand side to back up Zaniolo, 26 year old Danishman. Someone like a Campos leaves, an older player and we've brought in a much younger player here. Someone that's in the prime of his career after four very very good seasons with Club Bruges. Exceptional performances over there and hopefully he'll keep that up for us in a Sevilla shirt. Two transfers to go now. One of them is another free signing, Sofian Diop who has got 20 appearances for the France international team and seven goals doing very well and performing so well for Nice out in France. Available as a free agent. Couldn't say no to that and that's even more depth on those wide areas. And finally the one we spent actual cash on, Matt O'Reilly the Danishman, 25 year old joins us from Celtic where he's been so so good. Like 7.6 to average match rating is insane even if he is playing for Celtic. 21 million, it's a big fee but he comes in as our best central midfielder and I'm hoping that he'll really kick on in that midfield for us and drag us to another level. A big physical presence as well very happy with that. That's really improved our team in my opinion just to let you know as well the Spanish national side have just won the World Cup against the French national team Rafamir has seven appearances but it's Abel Ruiz who has helped him towards that World Cup with five goals in 12 appearances at the same time in the final they were playing against France where Andy Diouf has now been called up and is playing for them which is great and also the man we just signed Sofian Diop was the World Cup top goal scorer scoring pretty much every goal you're seeing here for France in that single competition so well done to them and our team looks really balanced now so let and Nianzu is a great centre-back partnership with Mamar Dashvili in goal, Alno Martinez, Sergio Gomez, Mazoshi, Diouf, Villagra, Zaniolo, Magno, Ruiz Mir and a host of other players on the bench. Skov Olsen, Oscar, who's been here the whole time. I think he's even club captain and I've never even spoke about him. He's been playing quite a lot for us, doing well. He was initially on loan, but yeah, this team is ready to go for the final season. Great facilities, capacity is about 10,000 higher than what we inherited. The reputation of the club is going up, but we really need to win some trophies if we're going to make it a success. Yes, we've brought in a much better squad than what we inherited. And of course, it's certainly better than where they are in real life at the bottom of a Spanish league table, but it's not really quite what we want. So in our final season, we need to try and win some trophies. And we've only gone and done it. Now, there is a bit of a caveat to this season, which we'll talk about in a second. But the Spanish Cup, we have won. Who did we beat? It was Real Madrid in the final 2-1, having knocked out Valencia to get there. Very happy to win that trophy for the first time in the rebuild. And Sevilla last won this. Let's have a look back in 2009. So it's been a while since that trophy has been with us here in Seville, but we've done it. And then, of course, the big one. We have won the Spanish First Division. Now, I have no clue how this has gone down because 88 points in every season, I believe, has been 
been enough to win it. Maybe one season it wasn't. I mean, Real Madrid get 98 points, only lose two games all season, one of them to us. We lost four, double the amount Real Madrid lost, but we just never drew. We were just always winning games by the looks of it, scoring a lot of goals this year. Still not as many as Real Madrid, but 100 points was what it took to win the league. We could have had 97 points and not won it. That's how good Real Madrid were. Um, and yes, we'll look more at that in a second, but the Champions League, kind of disappointingly, we got knocked out in the quarterfinals and that's not a bad position to be in, but we did knock out Liverpool to get there. We also knocked out Borussia Dortmund in, again, crazy ties where there's so many goals scored. Clearly our tactic is very aggressive, but I mean, RB Salzburg losing to them in the quarters, Ah, that is disappointing to me. I feel like we could have gone all the way to at least a semi-final there. Salzburg then got Drew against Man City. Who's to say we couldn't have beat them and then been in the final? Look, it's not the most disappointing season. We got 100 points after all, but I just didn't want to lose to Salzburg. Feels like that's a real underwhelming thing in the Champions League, but we haven't actually won the UCL in this rebuild. Saying that, will certainly take topping the Spanish division title for the first time in many a year. Abel Ruiz has absolutely carried us alongside Rafa Mir, who's been here since the start, scoring goals for fun, now wanted by Man United. Maybe we're going to lose these players. If you remember, in the Spanish leagues, everybody has to have a release clause, so there's a good chance some of these will get activated. Zaniolo, brilliant year for us. Lacina Traore, 22 goals, a lot of them from bench appearances too. That is what we needed. That might have given us that extra oomph this year. We definitely didn't have that in previous seasons, that amount of goals from other players in the team. I mean, Talismano, 21 goals. Scott Olsen, 19. Everyone pushing together to get us these trophies. They've done so well. Yes, we're playing in more competitions, but that is exceptional performances all around even Oscar scoring eight times and even though the Champions League was disappointing I'm certainly going to take it as a positive end to the rebuild we've built a very nice team with a lot of depth and this team could definitely go forward and do even more still only a four and a half star squad capacity is down again because we're once again upgrading the stadium but facilities are at a maximum the staff situation has absolutely bombed upwards we have the best staff in the league financially 66 million in the balance still 25 mil to spend which seems to just be the number that they gave me every single year but we have definitely taken this club to another level Sevilla will be flying they've won the Spanish league and it's a far cry from where they are in real life thank you guys for watching suggest your next rebuild in the comments down below and I'll see you next time thank you and goodbye